Hey, 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 folks, how's it going out there? We are going live here. Uh, <laughs> just want to welcome everybody. Hey, this is your Uncle B. We are going to have ourselves a good time talking about what we always talk about, some sexual health, some... some good time talking about... Huh? What we always talk about, some sexual health, some... Good time talking about... What we always talk about, some sexual health, some... Good time talking about... All right, just had a little, just a little bit of tech. <laughs> just getting everything set up here. But yeah, we do want to rock and roll here. I don't want to waste anybody's time because this is some important information. Uh, I do want to say thank you for everybody who's hopped on already. Hey, shout out to Tony. I see you there, brother. Um, for everybody else who are new here, who are new to me, hey, my name is Brian, a.k.a. Uncle Bill. For the last 20 years, I've been the... Men's performance coach with African Fly, the liquid aphrodisiac. Of course, I'll ask you to check out AfricanFly.com. But for right now, this is all about the information. This is all about making you better. Um, this is what I do as a coach. Uh, I've been doing this for the past 20 years, helping guys either one-on-one, -on -one, um, just giving the information that's needed. Hey, shout out to Damon. Hey, good to see you there, brother. Um, and today we're going to talk about something that's Near and dear to a lot of guys, uh, erections, <laughs> but not only that, but morning erections. What is it that you can do to get them and keep them and stay uh, having the morning erections on that level? It's, it's really a sign of health, and I want to break this down and give you all the information that you need. Hey, shout out to Donald and Aaron. Good to see you guys here. Appreciate you. Um, of course, if you have any questions, hit me up in the chat. That's what I'm here for. This is the reason why we do it live. Of course, we have our normal videos that come out on Thursdays at 9, I'm sorry, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and every Thursday at 9 p.m. I'm here to answer your questions. So let's uh, get rocking and rolling. Hey, uh, Jarius. Hey, Kendall. What's going on? Appreciate you. Lawrence. Uh, Manula. Uh, uh, I hope I'm saying that right. Hey, I just appreciate you for being here. Manu. La. Nice name. I like that. All right. So let's go ahead and rock and roll. So if you want to get back to having morning erections for a lot of guys, sometimes we go through life and we don't pay attention. It's just like, hey, everything's working. Then slowly some things don't work as well. And hey, Charles, uh, we are going to talk about that. The CMOS and the effects, how that works. I'm now taking CMOS myself. Uh, but yeah, so when we're talking about your morning erections, we're talking about you being at your highest sexual health level. And what we're going to talk about today is breaking down the sexual performance scale and how that can help you in terms of figuring out where you are so you can get to that next level. Um, and so specifically, we're going to be talking about the sexual performance scale, what needs to be done so you can move up that scale. And as a coaching bonus tip, um, I'm going to set up, give you a... a that routine that you'll need in terms of getting to where you want to be. So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, we're going to talk about the sexual performance scale. This is something I actually came up with as a coach because when I'm talking to guys, you know, used to have long conversations trying to figure out exactly where they were. And so I came up with a scale just to make it easy so guys could just let me know. So the scale is a scale of one to 10, with 10 being the highest. And with that, you know, at a level of 10, you know, everything's working. That's when you do have morning erections, uh, spontaneous erections, um, erections on demand. One is nothing's working. You're actually, you need to go to the doctor. <laughs> There's something terribly wrong. And five to seven is what I generally deal with because that's guys who are like finally realizing, yeah, I have a problem. What can I do to uh, help with that problem? So, you know, this is the part that helps out. So, uh, you know, when we say a 10, we're actually talking about the full level. <laughs> That's when your erections are actually at a 45 degree angle. You are, your core is tight. Everything is working. Um, and when you're at a eight to nine, those type of get eight to nine to 10, really don't need African fly. Uh, you, you know, if you take it, you, cause you want to just to get even better. But most guys I work with, like I said, it's five to seven and it's necessary for you to understand where you are and to be honest about it. Because, you know, I asked some guys like on a scale of one to 10, where are you? Hey man, I'm a 15. It's like, come on, man, you wouldn't be talking to me if you were a 15. So let's go ahead and be honest about it. Um, you're not, it, it didn't, the goal is for you to get better with the person you're going to be with, not impress me. It's, I talk to a lot of guys who are not going to impress me just by saying you're 15 when you're not. Um, so let's talk about those morning erections. Morning erections is a sign of health. <laughs> it's 
daggone near the best time to have sex because not only is your testosterone level the highest, but also the, the woman that you're with, her testosterone level is going to be high also. And testosterone is what drives erections and, of course, uh, drives sexual desire. Um, so, you know, if you're having that morning erection, you're a 10 out of 10, your, your health is great. Um, you know, the bursting and burning of testosterone is what fueling that erection every morning. And the thing to remember is how testosterone works. So testosterone builds while you're asleep, while you're sleeping. So you have that buildup overnight of testosterone. And so in the morning, if everything's working correctly, your erections will go up. You have that morning erection. And it's also dictated by your circadian rhythms because, you know, you have your sleep and your wake patterns. So when it gets darker, your body feels like going to sleep. When it gets lighter, somewhere in the morning, your body comes up and your testosterone levels come up with it. It's just the way we're pre-programmed. That's nature. So when we talk about the morning routine, the goal is to create, first of all, a routine that you'll stick to. And so it becomes normal. I mean, this is, has to be a normal everyday thing. We have a lot of things attacking our testosterone constantly. We're talking about just regular stress, life stress, uh, the way we eat, the way we sleep, uh, the foods that we're eating, all of those things add up. And so it becomes more difficult to have those erections unless you're counteracting that you're actually doing the things you're supposed to do so like with everything being successful you have to have those successful steps in there that you're being consistent with so here's the first thing i would suggest the first thing is the first 20 minutes after waking up um just put yourself into that good mood you know a lot of people do meditations uh some people listen to you know uh, a motivational speaker you have to do something that's pumping your brain up giving you positive vibes because a lot of guys you know it's like you wake up the first thing you're thinking about oh i gotta go to work today and the stress and it is and it that and it's like well your brain is doing two things it's saying hey it's time to get up time for that erection on the other hand you're thinking all these negative things that, oh no no you bruh you know, you got to do this and then you got the kids. And, uh, and, and with that thought process, you're starting off on the wrong level. Um, you're increasing your cortisol, which is the enemy of your testosterone. So that stress is decreasing your ability to have a morning erection. So that's one thing. Wake up at the same time. Do not hit the snooze button. And I know, I know, I understand completely. It's like, hit the snooze button, just shut up. I need to, I need to. I need some more sleep. If you're doing that, you're actually messing up your own rhythm. If the alarm, if you set your alarm top to go off at a certain time, just get up with it. If you don't do that, you're actually lowering your testosterone because you're confusing your body. <laughs> you just said, I'm getting up. Now I'm going to try to go back to sleep. You actually never really get back to sleep. In fact, you're more pissed off <laughs> after you hit that alarm bell and you say, I'm back to this again. Yeah, it's a problem. Um, do not look at your phone. First thing, a lot of people do that. That is an issue. If you're looking at your phone, you have a whole bunch of stresses coming at you that really don't need to be there. You know, you just woke up. Why are you going to get, you know, oh, the boss emailed me or uh, the kids emailed or something else went wrong or the news is horrible. Don't start off your mornings. Your morning should be happy. And <laughs> you woke up. Thank the Lord. All that good stuff. You woke up with an erection. That's even better. Thank the Lord even more. <laughs> but um also you know like i said before you can do some meditations you know it's all about calming your brain the first thing you do in the morning has to be calming your brain so that your day is set up for higher testosterone and better living um and one other thing i just like to do personally is just review my goals just to say hey what's going on what's what's making things better for me so one of them, let's go to the second thing that's really important that's intermittent fasting now everything i said about the morning routine this is a huge part of it. Uh, if you're coming when you're developing that testosterone while you're asleep, when you wake up, your testosterone is at its high level. It does not start coming down until you start eating. OK, as soon as you eat, your body's like, oh, OK, I have to take care of the food that came in here. I have to deal with the digestion and everything like that. So I don't have time to think about, you know, building up more testosterone. So you want to give your body as much time as possible so you can build that testosterone. Um, mm -hmm. okay. Right. We got some questions in here. I am going to get to every one of them. Natural medicines. Uh, Hey Ali, appreciate you, bro. Um, but you know, when we talk about intermittent fasting, basically we're saying don't eat anything for roughly 16 hours. Um, so 
you're able to give your body a chance to digest the food that's already there and that's your body's now looking for the energy from from the waste that's in your body so you're now burning energy the the waste that's in your body it's a great way to lose weight it's a great way to even have a clearer mind so it works out and just doing that increases your testosterone and your human growth hormone by 100 percent you gotta love that <laughs> by 100 percent um and like i say eating in the morning shuts that down so even if you're doing fasted workouts um I, that's actually recommended you know if you're working out first thing in the morning and you want to go ahead mm, excuse me i'm sweating like revving up here <laughs> um you want to go ahead and and get that workout in because it increases your metabolism <laughs> you're getting more bang for your buck when you're doing that you will have more energy um and when i say fast i mean fasted not starving so you want to have the nutrients in your body you know it, it it's it's something that you have to pay attention to you don't want to go overboard we're always trying to help your body not to harm your body and um one thing that people always ask me about is like what kind of protein shake should i take should I take you don't need a protein shake just a couple of quick questions. Have you ever heard of someone with a protein deficiency? No. <laughs> and we even got people in the room right now <laughs> looking at me crazy. Protein shake. Got to have a protein shake. You don't know what I mean? Protein shake. Problem is, is that a lot of those protein shakes have a lot of sugar. You know that the protein shakes, the protein bars. When is protein sweet? Everybody like, oh, animal protein. Other protein isn't sweet. So why is this protein in a, in a can sweet? Uh, not a good look. Not a good look. Uh, and as far as the type of workout to do, you do want to do high intensity interval training. And the reason for that is that because it increases your testosterone levels. Uh, and also when I say high intensity interval training, that means doing a workout where you're taking 30 seconds of high intensity work, whether it's jumping jacks, running in place, you know, whatever exercise you decide to do and then resting for a good 15 seconds. Because you're doing this high intensity, you're revving up your body and then you're stopping, giving yourself enough time to get back in a position to rev up again, get that energy going. You're building up that testosterone. Use that technique. It works. Um, and also you want to lift heavy. Uh, when we say lift heavy, you know, just, just a good 70 to 80% of the weight, you know, you want to get to that level. The reason for that is because you're actually tearing the muscles, you're breaking the muscles down. When you go to sleep in the evening, your body's going to say, hey, we need to repair these muscles, make them stronger, make them bigger. So we need to dial up the testosterone. So if you're doing high intensity interval training, if you're lifting heavy weights, your testosterone levels will go up. You'll have better erections first thing in the morning. See, get it, get it, this is how it all comes along. Um, of course, I gotta mention it, you know, uh, I uh, uh, talk about African Fly because I've been using it for the past 20 years. I uh, have other people who have been using it for, for a very long, very long time, uh, over a decade or more. And it, the idea, here's the first thing. Um, what I tell people is that it's a supplement. It's supposed to supplement the other things that you're doing. That's the reason why we, though I've been selling this for years, I realized it was, some guys were like, I'm going to take it, but I'm not going to do anything else. That's being part of the magical pill society where, you know, go to your doctor. Your doctor would say, here, take this. And you do I do anything else? Uh, just run around in circles. They don't know what to tell you. <laughs> so what you need to do is to not just take something. You need to do things that are going to increase the effectiveness of it. And this is part of that. So uh, the other thing that African Fly does do, it helps move you up that scale. So if you're sitting at a five, six or seven, you know, just taking African fly by, by itself, depending on your level of health, can move you up uh, just by itself. But you're doing other things, it'll help move you up faster, especially over a period of time. Uh, and it helps with that whole cycle of creating that energy, creating that testosterone so you can have those morning erections. Um, and also, when we talked about the fast, just to be clear, coming out of a fast is important. When we say fast, you know, it's actually the word break fast. You're breaking your fast. So you're not eating while you're sleeping. That's why we call it break fast, because if you're eating first in the morning, you know, but really what you eat when you're breaking your fast is important. So the last thing, <laughs> the first thing that's in your gut sort of determines your day. So you want that to be as healthy as possible. Um, you don't want it to be sugar. You don't want it to be uh, coffee. You don't want it to be, you know, high carbs, anything like that. You want something that your body is going to be able to absorb and it actually helps you throughout the day. It actually calms your body down. It's like, hey, we have good nutrition. 
So now your brain isn't thinking, oh, I have to run out and find more good nutrition. It's sitting there saying, oh, I'm good for right now. I can be settled for the day. So make sure you do that. Um, uncooked fruit, vegetables. I know that sounds weird, you know, eating a salad first thing in the morning. Who does that? Well, it's better than a Big Mac. It's better than a, not a Big Mac in the morning, but hey, you can probably get those nowadays. Um, but, you know, any of the fast food stuff, when you eat that fast food first thing in the morning, your body is it, it has problems all day long. So that's very important what you eat coming out of your fast. Um, and one huge thing, breakfast cereal. Dudes, stop. That was made up by Dr. Kellogg. He was actually looking to get people to stop having sex. Yeah, that's where Kellogg's first started from. Um, and also part of the reason why it wasn't just the, the cereal that he made up, it was actually the milk. So you have people drinking milk first thing in the morning. Milk kills your testosterone immediately. Why? Because you're getting something from a giant female. That's not designed for you as a human. It's actually designed for a calf. And so you have people who are like, I, I don't understand why my testosterone is not doing well. It's because you're taking in something that's going to shut it down immediately. We're talking about within a half an hour, your testosterone dives. Um, and this also applies to cheese. Mm hmm. Hey, Elliot, uh, only have an apple and a banana with peanut butter one hour before my morning run. I got you. I got you. Uh, as long as you're being healthy, as long as you're being real. What about running five to seven miles? Uh, Elliot, let me just say this right quick. And I'm going to get to everybody's questions. I just it just popped out to me. Uh, but when it comes down to it, uh, running actually is not great for your testosterone. Now, I want to be very careful. I'm not saying don't do it. If you're looking for a specific result, such as you want to run to be slim, to have that cardio, I'm not going to tell you to stop doing that. However, I'm going to say you do have to be aware that you're running your system on a high level and it can decrease your testosterone. If you start noticing that it's a problem, you may want to incorporate more heavy lifting, incorporate more hit into your workout routine so you don't have uh, testosterone issues. Okay, I hope that answers your question there, sir. Uh, mm -hmm. Each music count. I need the African fly. Where can I buy it? Africanfly.com. <laughs> Just go there. Uh, we have plenty of information so you get all the information possible. Please sign up for the fly zones. That's where you get our, uh, our emails and get information like this delivered to you. Um, and so let me go ahead and hop into because I want to make sure I get all these questions in. Uh, let me just uh, go ahead and wrap up this part of it. And there's so many questions that have come up and I want to make sure I get to them all. So when it comes down to it, what can you do to set yourself up to make sure you're doing everything right? I call it morning worship. And it is really back to what you do the night before. You actually want to take a half an hour to an hour and just sort of prep for the next day. Because if you're waking up in stress because, you know, I have to iron my clothes, I have to fix my lunch, I have to do this, I have to do this with the kids, I got... It, your testosterone is like, eh, eh, it's not going to get better. Uh, so you want your clothes laid out, whatever it takes so that when you wake up, it's easy. And so therefore you're not thinking about all the things I have to do. You're waking up thinking like, okay, let me just go ahead and relax. Let me think of some positive things. Let me get myself motivated first thing in the morning so that my erections will follow. I can get those morning erections back. Um, and so you want to do all those different things I was saying. You want to wake up at the same time. <laughs> uh, when you wake up at that same time, you know, alarm clock goes off. Turn that alarm clock off so you can just get to it, get up, get going. Uh, reviewing your goals, doing that meditation, all of those things, even doing high intensity interval training first thing in the morning is a great thing to do. Uh, it's all about getting it done <laughs> correctly. It's all about making sure that your routine fits the goals that you want. If you want testosterone, remember, the world is not designed for testosterone. Most of us are inside all day long. We're not getting the sun. We're not getting the water. Uh, we're not getting fresh water. We're not getting fresh air. Uh, we're eating the wrong foods. We ha you have to make it a purpose to get your testosterone up. We're in a testosterone pandemic. Everyone's testosterone level is lower. Your grandfather's testosterone is lower than yours. Uh, I'm sorry, it's higher than yours at the same age. This has happened around the world, so we need to get that testosterone level up. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so 
there we go. You know, I do have this one question for the guys out there. Do you have anything that you're doing in terms of testosterone? Have you been focusing in on it? Uh, if you want to answer that in the chat session, that's cool. Let me go ahead and hop into some of these questions. Uh, and I do want to say a, a quick shout out to all the folks who are here. I appreciate you, Charles. I appreciate you, Albert. Um, uh, Charles Jones, what about almond milk? Uh, almond milk is good. Um, let me just say this. It's still processed. Uh, the, eating the almond is actually better. But the reason for almond milk is because we got so used to cow's milk. So almond milk is infinitely better than cow's milk. But, you know, the, the, the concept of having milk, period, is just based off of cow's milk. So we're processing a plant for another purpose. So it's fine. Uh, it's, it's way better than uh, cow's milk. So, yeah, go for that. Uh, See Rob Jones are working out and currently overweight. What's the best way to keep test and energy levels up when cutting weight? Um, being consistent. Really, your body knows what to do. Uh, as long as you're not wearing yourself out. Uh, a lot of guys don't think about the long term. They're thinking like, oh, OK, I'm in the gym. So let me work on do everything really. Now, you have time. <laughs> as long as you've been alive, you're. Um, we can almost assume you're going to be alive for a lot longer. <laughs> so what you need to do is be consistent with your exercise. The weight will come off. If you're older, um, it becomes more of an issue. People have always, and I always wonder, <laughs> why is it that as you get older, it's so much harder to lose weight? The truth of it is you basically uh, have been feeding the bacteria in your gut for years the wrong food. And so you have the wrong bacteria that's in there. We're talking about trillions, hundreds of trillions of bacteria. So you train this bacteria to grow the bacteria that's not great for you. The only way you can turn that around is actually eating more plant fiber so you can get uh, the good bacteria in your gut. It takes a while for you to replace it because you've been doing it for years and therefore you end up running into an issue. Okay, uh, we got the questions coming in. I appreciate that. Uh, let me see, Charles, what about steel cut oat milk? Yep, that's great. Oat milk is good for you. Get that fiber in there. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, what about beet juice? Man, I got that in my refrigerator right now, Albert. <laughs> yes, beet juice is absolutely great. It actually gives you uh, a lot more energy. Um, they say it increases your uh, exercise output by 20%, which is huge. That's huge. So, yeah, you want to be consistent with that. Uh, the one thing I would say is don't go overboard with it. You, all you need is just a quick cup. You know, you don't need to drink the whole thing at once. It's not like Gatorade. So uh, there we go. Mm hmm. Yep. Elliot, veggie omelet in the morning. I see. I see. Uh, yes. Creole cousin. Yes. Beet juice. <laughs> that's that's a good thing right there. So uh, there are other some other questions I would do want to uh, hit that were uh, asked of me. Uh, there we go. Can I get my questions up here? Um, so uh, this came in, in the comment section when this video uh, came up. Uh, please go to the channel when you get a chance. Uh, actually, you're on the channel. But um, we do have this video where I, I go through this. It's a shorter version, um, but you can get some, some more answers out of that. Um, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, we've got a lot of things, <laughs> a lot of questions coming here. So here's a question. Uh, does masturbation decrease testosterone? Uh, mm, I want to be careful in how I, I say this. It doesn't decrease testosterone, but what it does do is it takes up testosterone. You know, the, like I said, the bursting and burning of testosterone fuels an erection, but it's something that your body wants to keep doing. So if you're masturbating, if you're taking it too far, if you're masturbating constantly, when you're masturbating, you're saying that I want to have sex. Unfortunately, the person that you want to have sex with isn't there. <laughs> That's all that is. So uh, it's the same as having sex. Your body is going to be able to generate more energy. It's like it's like working a muscle. It's like, OK, you you need more testosterone. Let's produce more testosterone. But if you're doing the wrong stuff at the same time, I'm going to drink a beer, then jerk off. Yes, your testosterone levels are going to be going down. Uh, so I hope that answers your question. It's, it's sort of a complicated question. Uh, actually, I'll probably do a video. I did do a video on that, but I'll probably do another one. Uh, Jacob, what do you think is better, semen retention or masturbation? Uh, it really depends on uh, you, truthfully. 
um, and what you're trying to get out of it. Uh, masturbation, like I said, is you just want to have sex, but it's not available to you. Um, and semen retention is uh, maybe sex is available to you, even masturbation, but you decide not to. So it's like, what is your goal? Uh, semen retention has happened for to men for millions of years, basically because, eh, you know, they weren't masturbating all the time and there was no women around. So it was like, yeah, we'll go for months. You get on a boat, you go for months without sex. That's semen retention right there. So uh, it, you know, doesn't make you a better person. It by, its, by itself, I wouldn't say so. Um, like masturbation doesn't make you a worse person. It's not it by itself that's going to make that, that big of a difference. Uh, uh, Elliot asks, what about raw eggs added to the diet? Uh, nah. Uh, not for me. Uh, I don't think that's a good idea. Uh, whenever you're dealing with uh, animal products, you're causing inflammation in your body, period, across the board. That, you're, you're, you're eating death, <laughs> as it were. Your body doesn't process, de process death well. Uh, it's going to stay inside of your body. It's going to clog some things up. You're going to run into some problems down the road. The thing about humans, humans, we're all over the planet. We can eat all types of stuff. <laughs> all types of plants, animals, crap, we have figured out. Let I me mean, think about it. We eat stuff from squid <laughs> to buffalo. I mean, <laughs> that's insane. So, uh, you know, we can eat a lot of stuff, but it's not necessarily good for us to have any type of animal inside of our system. Hmm. Uh, Jacob said, is it bad that I'm not getting erections easily from African fly? Uh, let me not say it's bad, uh, but it's not, obviously it's not good. It's not the goal that you want. So, you know, that's the reason why we're uh, opening up coaching, because here's the deal. You know, and this is the reason why we have the money back guarantee. We're talking about humans all over the planet. Um, that's the reason why there are plants. There's 22,000 edible plants on the planet, because... There's so many humans and so many plants that we can absorb. Sometimes there are plants that are not as, as powerful for us. So, you know, I always wondered myself, I took African fly, it works all the time. Um, for some people, it's like, yeah, it sort of works, doesn't work, blah, blah, blah. So sometimes it is some other things that you need to do, pay attention to. I would say um, you should check your testosterone levels. Uh, we do have um, a company that we partner with. They do do testosterone level checks and try to figure out how I can get that to you. Uh, Donald Littles is asking the question, is going plant-based the way to go? Yes, definitely, definitely. Your body operates off of plant fiber. Um, like I said before, we can eat anything, um, but there's a difference between eating to survive, which is eating an animal, and eating to thrive, which is eating plants. So best believe I am plant based, have been going plant based for a while. But um, if it's me and a cow, the only thing left on this planet, that cow is dying. <laughs> that, that cow is, is is all types of burgers and fries. Is, I'm going to make that happen. So uh, <laughs> uh, it's testosterone testing expensive. Uh, the folks that we partner with, they have levels at like roughly sixty five dollars and another level at one twenty nine. And it just gives you that basis of your testosterone um, so that you can use that. Uh, Charles asks, does African fly have your, your Hembe in it? Yes, it does. Um, it is one of the main ingredients. What we've done because your Hembe, and when I say your Hembe, I mean the actual plant, not your Hembean, which is the chemical derivative that some people have taken out, put into a pill that makes people really fidgety and nervous and gives your Hembe a bad reputation. Um, but we do mix your Hembe with other plants. Um, in there is eight other Herbs, we're talking about cinnamon, cinnamon, sarsaparilla, cloves, all of these different herbs help balance it out so that you're getting uh, the best out of your hembe and all of the other herbs uh, to help with your circulation, help move uh, blood flow to your genital region so you can function uh, better. Lloyd, my test was 577. All right, good deal, good deal. Let's see if you can get it up to 800, man. <laughs> That'd be great. I'm around uh, 600 myself, but yeah, it's always good to just keep going up because as you get older, of course, as you know, your testosterone levels are going down. So let's go ahead and get that to where you can use it. Um, does smoking weed kill testosterone? Uh, <laughs> depends on the type of weed. Um, the higher the THC level, the more effect it has on your testosterone tank, taking it down. So the weed that we have now 
is much higher in THC. The weed that they were smoking back in the day, Dizzy Gillespie and everything like that, much lower in THC. They just smoked it, felt good, played jazz, whatever. Uh, we're, you know, at this point, you know, people got all fancy with the weed and it's like smoking it like, yeah, you get stoned. Being stoned, obviously, is not good for any part of your body, especially with just testosterone and your erection. So uh, especially if you're overdoing it with the weed, it's going to cause problems. There is no point where inhaling smoke is good for you. There you go. Uh, what is a good test? What is a good number for your testosterone? Good question. Creole uh, cousin. Creole cousin. I appreciate that, bro. Um, that is a good question. And the. Uh, the I would say the number you should aim for is roughly like 800. Um, you know, that will put you in a good spot. You know, you go above that. You're just eh, it's great. If you're at 800, you're basically a 10. You're, you're good. You're good. Uh, you should be having erections and all that stuff with no problems. Uh, OK, David, I'm not sure what that question means. Uh, what is the best blend drink you could use to help you? Um. Really, it depends on you. Um, I would say be careful with uh, drinks. Um, typically, people are talking about they want to have, you know, a sweet. So it's like even people are getting the juicing. They're like, oh, let me throw carrots and apples and, you know, all this stuff in there. It's like if you're drinking for taste, then you're not drinking for results. Give me. <laughs> so it's like um, if you have a lot of sugar in any of the juices, um, Especially if it's uh, if it's been juiced, if you've been taking the fiber out of it, the fiber is what your body needs. All that extra stuff, you're just putting sugar into your system. And with that much sugar, you're actually encouraging your body to want more sugar. So you're going to feel hungrier and also and you're not going to feel full. And of course, sugar lowers your testosterone levels um, very quickly. Within a half an hour, your testosterone levels have gone down. So you want to be careful with that. Uh, mm -hmm. Solomon, hey, what's going on, man? Uh, how do you measure your testosterone? Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, you do need to get a testosterone testing kit. I'm going to make sure that we get that up there uh, somewhere in here for you guys uh, so you can check out that link uh, because uh, it, uh, uh, it, it does make a difference if you get that testosterone uh, check. How it is measured um, you know, it's on the scale of basically zero to 1300. That's the range that people are, uh, typically have, um, go back a few generations. Everybody's sitting around 800. Uh, now we have people who are now in the two hundreds or, or, or worse, and that's not a good level to be at. Um, if you're just roughly, uh, 400 to 500, I would say on the sexual performance scale, you're sitting there at a seven. Uh, if you get to 600, 700, 800, you're just moving all the way up to a, a 10 on that sexual performance scale where you have the erections on demand, erections uh, in the morning, spontaneous erections, all that great stuff. Mm -hmm. Hey, Jacob. Jacob has a question about uh, increasing penis size. That's a, woo, that's a, <laughs> a good long topic right there, sir. Uh, we're going to have to do another. I have done a video about that. Please check out the channel. Um, for penis enlargement, uh, it's a good 10 minute video It's something that you need to fully understand to, uh, get that working for you. But penis enlargement is real. Uh, we guys tend to be, uh, uh, anywhere from 10, 20 to 30% smaller than we could be just because of our lifestyle, just the way we eat and things like that. Uh, just sitting around all day. Uh, but you can, uh, do some things to increase your, your size. You're not going to grow four inches in four days. That's a commercial and a lie. <laughs> so don't believe that. Uh, what is the link between long quality sleep and morning wood? It's a big one. It's a big one. And that is because when you're doing uh, when you're when you're asleep, your testosterone builds. The quality of sleep makes a huge difference. Uh, please check out the video I did on sleep um, and your testosterone levels, because what ends up happening is the higher your quality of sleep, um, the higher the, the REM state that you are, that's when your testosterone levels uh, start going up. So if you're drinking before you go to sleep, you're not going to get that REM. You're not going to get that high level of uh, that high quality. If you're changing when you sleep. Uh, so like one night I go to sleep at nine o'clock, next night I go to 
12 o'clock next night, one o'clock, your body can't get into a rhythm. So you're not falling asleep in the same way. So you want to have that, that basic rhythm. You want to sleep for a good eight hours. I know a lot of people say, no, you don't need to sleep, you know, just six hours. And well, it depends on what you're trying to do. <laughs> if you're trying to get that promotion at work, okay, sleep for six hours. If you're trying to increase your testosterone, you need that good eight hours. So yeah, quality of sleep does make a huge difference. Uh, Brandon, hey Brandon, what's going on, man? Does fasting help rise, raise uh, testosterone? Definitely, definitely. Um, we're talking about up to 200%. Um, the longer you're fasting, the better it is in terms of your testosterone. Um, but you have to be careful with the fasting. I talk to a lot of guys who when they go fasting, it's like, okay, I'm gonna eat that one meal. That, that last meal is a lasagna, Thanksgiving meal, and then I'm going to fast and your body is not going to appreciate that. Uh, you want to uh, have the right foods in you. So I tell people to, you know, you want to ease into your fasting. You want to start eating better and better and better food. So when you're fasting, your body has the nutrition in your gut, in your stomach to, you know, slide easily, more comfortably into the fast. Whereas if it's trying to break down food, and sometimes, you know, that hunger pain that you hear that you have, the hunger pain is coming from uh, your body saying, OK, this nutrition isn't good enough for me. I need more. And so it's going to ask for more. And so you're going to feel worse uh, throughout you know, the beginning of it. I actually saw a, a special where the lady decided to drink Diet Dr. Pepper before going on a fast. That was so stupid. <laughs> she was just, oh, it's painful. Yeah. <laughs> you have a bunch of bad chemicals in it that normally the hunger pain is signaling you to eat something else to cover up that pain. So you want to be careful with that fast, but it does increase your testosterone and your HGA. It is a great thing. Hmm. Joseph Suarez, how to regulate dopamine after being addicted to porn. Woo. <laughs> My man, that is a good question. Um, I think I've done, I've talked about it in the video. I'll expand, expand on that. That's a, that's a completely different uh, topic from what we have right here, but I do appreciate that question. I'll make sure to, that we can do that. Uh, let me make sure I get all these questions in here. Uh, Lord, Lloyd, Lloyd, how you, how you doing, Lloyd? Uh, can you use your medical flex card for the test? That I'm not sure. Um, let me see if the, I can remember. Um, I'm, I'm not sure about that. I, um, yeah, I, I haven't had anyone ask me that question. <laughs> um, Gil, AKA MMA fan three, where does uh, zinc come into the picture? Um, zinc, um, zinc is a great thing. <laughs> um, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's in the crust of the earth. Um, and that's the reason why, you know, a lot of times you need an appeal in, in pill form to get it at a certain level, but they are in plants also. Um, and zinc helps with the, uh, formation of testosterone and helps with your erections, um, and helps with a lot of other things, obviously, because it's a mineral, but yeah, zinc definitely helps. Um, you want to be careful if you're taking the zinc pills because you can take too much of it. And those things are powerful. I used to uh, take zinc pills myself. And, you know, you want to make sure you have something in your stomach. I took it on an empty stomach, which is not a good idea at all. Um, so, yeah, zinc does work. <laughs> Mr. MJ, turn the computer off. Yeah, <laughs> that's actually a good idea. Turn the computer off so you can relieve that stress. You don't have the bloops and bleeps messing with you. Uh, are energy drinks okay in moderation? Albert, good question. And let me be honest. Oh, hell no. <laughs> Bro, I appreciate that question. It's a good question. And a lot of people think that you need these energy drinks. It's just sugar. And it's a lot of sugar. Um, and of course, that destroys your testosterone level and you're getting your energy from your testosterone. So though you will get a quick pep, you get that caffeine throughout the day. Of course, the next day you're going to feel even worse. So it's taking you on a downward spiral. It's messing up your testosterone. It's spiking your uh, your glucose levels. Your your pancreas is kicking out a whole bunch of insulin. Uh, it's, uh, it's messing with your liver. Uh, I highly if you're on that, I highly recommend that you you back away uh back away it's not great for you uh even though i'm not a pure fan of all juices 
you know, I would rather say drink orange juice, which has a lot of sugar, than drink those energy drinks because they have a lot of crap in them. It's like, what is it made of? Read the ingredients. <laughs> if you can tell me, please let me know. Uh, I, but you know, I'm playing with you, Albert. I, I, I really want you to, uh, to, to make sure you're, you're being careful with those. Uh, uh, Walter, can I use Tangat Ali to increase testosterone? Yeah, um, that works also. The, the thing, like I mentioned earlier, is that we have 22,000 edible plants around the planet. Um, a lot of those plants work with you in terms of your body. And so though we have certain ingredients in African fly, there are dozens of other products, uh, uh, let me say other products, but other herbs out there that can help you in certain ways. So uh, if Tanga Ali works for you, then yes, I personally haven't been taking it just because I'm an African fly fan, <laughs> but uh, uh, I, I've heard that it, it works for folks. So, you know, it's, it's okay. <laughs> Go ahead and experiment, check it out. Um, there are a bunch of herbs out there. Uh, Elliot, do I take questions via email? I try to, uh, be honest, we get a ton of emails constantly. Um, and we're working on a coaching program so they'll allow me to, you know, sort of do stuff like this. We'll have videos in a setup that will allow you to walk through and see all the videos. Uh, it won't be as random as we have it up on YouTube. Uh, Clifton, hey, what's going on, brother? Uh, mm -hmm. Ah, I keep getting up in early in the morning, can't go back to sleep. Um, so Clifton is asking uh, what can do what can I do to get a full night's sleep to raise my testosterone because I keep getting up early in the morning and can't go back to sleep. Um, that's a, that, that's, I'm not sure what your situation is. That's something that we'd have to have a conversation about because that's a, a specific issue. I mean, it could be in your environment. Um, it's like when you're saying you're trying to, you're getting up early, is that because the sun is in your face and it's waking you up or you're waking up at four o'clock because the trash can, the trash man is picking up the trash at that time. It may be a, a number of reasons why that that's happening. It doesn't sound like it's those things, but, uh, you do want to make sure you, uh, get that full night's sleep. If you have to go to sleep earlier, maybe that would, would balance it. But, you know, if you want to get that testosterone, yeah, get that figured out. There are some, uh, some teas and some, uh, some different herbs that can help you with your sleep. So you may want to try that also. Um, and maybe something in the pattern of what you're doing during the day. If you're drinking coffee later on in the day, that can affect your sleep. A lot of things can affect your sleep. I would say this, uh, first thing in the morning, uh, well, not first thing in the morning, when you can make sure in the morning you go out and you take a walk. Take a walk out in the sun that actually resets your uh, uh, your 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 sleep level, <laughs> if you will. Your body now knows it's like, oh, it is morning. So let me go ahead and stop preparing for night. So that can help you out. OK, mm. man, I love these questions. Thanks, fellas. Appreciate it. Uh, Archie, would you recommend the use of yoga and breathing exercise? Of course I would, because that's what I did. <laughs> uh, Yoga does increase testosterone, um, just like any other, basically any other movement does increase testosterone, but yoga is spe specifically because you're uh, actually fine-tuning your body, you're putting it back in balance. Yoga is a wonderful thing to do. As far as the breathing exercises are concerned, I do a breathing exercise. I use an app every morning um, using a technique that I learned from Tony Robbins um, in terms of that breathing pattern. I did a video on that and I want to get too far into that one, but it does, uh, breathing exercise, all that stuff helps. Um, the breathing exercise especially help because you're getting the level of oxygen that you need into your blood. A lot of people breathe shallowly, shallow, they breathe, they don't breathe deep. <laughs> so uh, you wanna make sure you do that. So yeah, that's great. Oh, Andy T, what can I do to stop waking up every two hours to pee at night? It sounds like you have BPH, I hope I'm saying it correctly. Um, but that is a, and I had that situation myself uh, a few years earlier before I realized what was going on. So uh, basically your diet is off. Your diet is off. Uh, as soon as I made changes, especially I used to, at the time that I did that, I was eating 200 animals a month. So uh, animal with every meal and then some, you know, a happy hour or something like that. And that's affecting your body to the point that you have to get up and, you know, I mean, for me, I had to get up, wake up, do that pee, you go to pee, and you think you have a lot coming out and nothing comes out, and now you're awake, and you're sort of stuck in this. And you have to take a look at your, your diet, change up your diet, that will just go away. Uh, unfortunately, if you listen to the doctors, you have to take a pill. 
<laughs> so uh, you can just change it if you diet. You don't have to work about, worry about that. Oh, let me get back to that. Somebody asked about CMOS. How does CMOS work for your testosterone and where to get it? Um, CMOS is, the, I get it from um, uh, these folks in Jamaica. I don't have the name of them off the top of my head. Um, but it's just like basically every, every other uh, piece of vegetation. It's going to help your testosterone in some way, shape, or form. Sea moss has a ton. I think one of the highest mineral dense um, uh, vegetation that there is. So it helps out in a lot of ways. Uh, the folks in Jamaica swear by it. So yeah, that does help a lot. Uh, hey, appreciate it, Albert. I would say the chat helped him out. I love that. I love that. That's what I do. <laughs> uh, uh, what did I do to create to correct uh, the BPH? Uh, like I mentioned before, it was a change in diet. Sincerely, that was. Uh, I mean, I actually listed out a number of things that happened when I changed my diet, and we're talking about um, my hands used to cramp up. I had carpal tunnel. Uh, used to have dandruff. I don't have dandruff anymore. It's like insane. Um, used to, my knee would lock up constantly. That's like the first thing that happened. And yeah, after changing up my diet, when I say change up the diet, cutting out the meat, uh, and then you know, moving more towards more plants more often. I haven't had that situation since I've changed up my diet. That, and I really do appreciate that because I hated that. Oh man, you just get up, you gotta go, you get there to the bathroom, and nothing comes out and then you have to sit there all night awake, irritated. Uh, let me see. Mm-hmm. Let's meet more vegetables. Yes, Mr. MJ, you are right. Thank you, sir. Uh, Christian Mines, can you add African fly to a smoothie or dilute it with water? Yes. Mm -hmm. As long as you get it into your system. Um, the thing that I understand about uh, African fly is a liquid formula. It's a tincture. A tincture is basically you're taking herbs and you're straining it through cheesecloth with alcohol. And we allow it to sit for like two weeks and it just becomes more potent. Um, but really what it is, it's a liquid tea concentrate. So you think about it, it's like, uh, you know, you take a tea bag, it's nothing but herbs that you just put in hot water. And, you know, this just has to, happens to be a little bit more concentrated with the alcohol. So you could take African fly and just add it just like a tea. Yes, indeed. Uh, and you could add it to your smoothie as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, ah, Creole cousin, that's a good one. Uh, what should I do if you think you have retro ejaculation? Oh, I won't have to do a video on that one, sir. <laughs> That's a long conversation. I don't want to go too far off a path. I don't want to go too far. But I do appreciate that question, sir. Uh, what should you eat after fasting? Walter, great question, Walter. Um, what should you eat? Uh, I would say go straight plant. What I do is actually uh, I go with pears. Uh, and literally what I'll do is uh, just do a salad bowl. It's like I have, uh, I love raspberries, uh, bananas, uh, blackberries and blueberries you put those together in a bowl and it's like oh my god it, it's it's wonderful i mean it's it's actually sort of an interesting thing when you start eating better your body starts calling more for that type of food and it your body feels better everything just feels better and um it, it, everything works better <laughs> your erections are going to get better uh brandon has that question how many calories in african fly um don't know. And truthfully, and be honest, you don't have to worry about it. I won't go deep into uh, the thing about calories, but just really quickly, uh, calories are um, was in the the guy that came up with calories came up with that in roughly the 1870s. That's old science. I know everyone believes in calories and basically the way you figure out how, what how much uh, calories, where calories come from. You take a, a let's say your apple. You take an apple and you set it on fire, and you you know put it in this enclosed case with water around it, and you measure how how much uh, warmer the water gets. You measure the temperature of the water, and that's how you figure out a kilojoule. You figure out a calorie. The problem with that, of course, is that uh, you're a human. There's nothing about you that burns anything. You don't. There's no smoke coming out of anything. Uh, calories. Is something that we've been believing in, but just like so many things now, we're realizing that it's wrong. <laughs> and so I know some people are like, but I, you know, I, ch I lowered my calories. No, you changed the way you ate. Well, I was burning calories on the treadmill. Really? 
So you're saying, you know, my nephew who's, you know, shorter than me, uh, younger than me, he's going to burn the same calories I do when I get on a treadmill. It's, it's, it's not making sense. You know, uh, I know some people are like, ah, it's a, 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 a it's, it's a cult almost to, you know, everyone just believes in calories. So I don't want to go too deep into it right now, but um, it's, it's, you're only taking a teaspoon of African fly. So very little calories in that. Very little. If you were to believe in calories. <laughs> uh, Jack is asking a quick question. I'm new. What is African fly? African fly is an all natural liquid aphrodisiac that helps increase your testosterone levels, help with the blood flow through your body so that you can have um, stronger, longer lasting erections. It helps uh, with your stamina so you can last longer. Um, and you can tell when it's working because you take it, you're actually your hands or your feet will feel cooler. That's one of the side effects, one of the few side effects, because you're drawing blood to your genital regions. Also, if you take it late in the evening, it will keep you awake because you just told your body to get ready for sex. <laughs> so that stamina is like, hey, hey, when we get to it, somebody got to wake up and we got to do this, got to do this. Uh, <laughs> Uh, can you use African fly if you're a borderline diabetic? Uh, yeah, I actually have a family member who was diabetic um, and he used it, uh, invested in the company um, because it worked for him. Uh, most diabetics are, uh, have low testosterone. So if you're a borderline diabetic, your testosterone levels are not uh, great. So uh, yeah, it can help. Um, but also you have to remember if once again, it's a supplement. So if you're doing that, make sure you're changing up your diet, uh, the way that you're supposed to, to avoid, uh, uh the diabetes altogether. Mm hmm. Let me see. Let me get some more questions here. Uh, Greg asked again, what not? uh, plant-based milk. Yes. Plant-based milk. Uh, I talked about that early with almond milk. Yep. You want to do that? Um, Jamar Grant, what about fish or fish for meat? Same thing. <laughs> if it's if it's alive and you consume it, then as a human, it means it's dead. Your body cannot process death correctly. It can do it. You can live. I've, I'm proof. I I can't go to hell because there's nothing but chickens waiting for me. <laughs> I've slaughtered chickens my entire life, and then I realized it was not a good thing for me, and my health is much better for that. So um, the same thing applies to fish. Um, and in, in fact, fish is actually oddly weird because we say fish to cover millions of species and those millions of species is like you know saying what's the difference between a horse and a pig um it's that different um so and for whatever reason we'll eat a pig but we won't eat a horse who knows <laughs> um so uh and, and also the uh there's a lot of mercury in the fish that's available now especially in tilapia um uh, which is grown on farms uh tilapia farms it's not a great thing not a great thing at all. Uh, James Brooks, what about people that say meats boost testosterone? Um, they're wrong. <laughs> and, um, you know, not to be offensive, man, but it, it, it's like um, with testosterone, you know, when you're eating meat and actually, oh, so what's the health? What the, not what the health? Uh, game Changers. Please go check out the movie Game Changers. It's on Netflix. Um, and they break it down very well, but basically when you're eating any type of meat, it gets into your system, it clouds your blood and it messes with your, uh, uh, your testosterone to the point that they did an experiment with, uh, three college, uh, football players, having them eat, um, different meals, eat meat, and they could tell the difference while they were asleep, uh, what the difference was in terms of their erections and um, how long the erections were so it was a huge difference between when they were eating plant-based and when they were eating uh, uh, the animal protein because when you're eating the animal protein it's like I said it's causing inflammation in your body your body has to deal with the inflammation before it can start producing that testosterone so while they were doing the normal thing of having five erections at night the uh, while they were asleep their erections were massively different in terms of how long the erections were and the fullness of the erection. So uh, meat is not great. Uh, how many bananas per day? It's up to you. <laughs> up to you. Whatever works out best for you. Uh, <laughs> I got you, James. Uh, will African fly break your fast? That's a very good question. Uh, Mac Pro. Um, the... 
it depends on what type of fast you're dealing with. So, you know, there's all different types of fasting. And, you know, if you're talking about a fasting, fasting where you're just not eating food, then African fly is fine. If you're talking about the fasting where you're like, I don't want to have any uh, spikes in my, my uh, 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 in, in carbs. Yeah, I don't want to have spikes in insulin. I don't want to have any of that. African fly is strained with alcohol. So that is going to affect uh, that, that side of your, uh, your fasting. So if you're doing a fasting where it's like you're not taking any calories in, the only thing you're doing is just drinking uh, maybe just coffee, maybe just water, that type of fasting, then, you know, if you're looking to keep the, your insulin and everything down, then yeah, it's going to affect that. If you're just, I'm just not going to eat food. <laughs> I'm just going to drink water. I'm just going to, I'm not worried about that in particular, then you're fine. You're fine. The importance to clean your system. Is it important? Um, yes, it's definitely important. Uh, and I want, I want you to be careful uh, when we're talking about cleaning your system because a lot of people think that cleaning your system means grabbing a whole bunch of pills and thinking, sticking things into your, your rectum <laughs> and flushing out and all this other kind of stuff. If you're fasting, that's detoxing. That's cleaning your system. If you're eating um, plant-based foods, that's fasting. That's detoxing your system. So um, that is, and that's cleaning your system. So you want to be careful with, you know, uh, some people just will get pills just to make them go to the bathroom. They'll just drink prune juice and just go to the bathroom and think that's cleaning their system. Cleaning your system, your intestines are long. <laughs> it's like, what is it, five times longer than your body? So it takes a while to clean out your system. So that's why uh, fasting helps. Adding more stuff to your system to clean your system is not how you clean your system. <laughs> so um, get that water in you. It, it'll help out a lot. Uh, where do you purchase African fly? Hey, Peter, uh, just check out AfricanFly.com. We have a ton of information about African fly. We want to make sure you're making the right decision. Um, it's worked for a lot of guys around the world for the past 20 years. Uh, we want to make sure it works for you. It is a supplement. So that's the reason why we do the coaching. So you get all the information that you need. Uh, hmm. <laughs> what of putting brown sugar in jungle oats? I'm not sure what jungle oats are, <laughs> uh, but brown sugar, no. Brown sugar is, uh, I've heard that brown sugar is healthier for you. Brown sugar is sugar with molasses. That's not healthier. <laughs> that's actually worse. I'm not sure who came up with that, but that's what that is. So you don't want brown sugar in your life. It's just perverted sugar, I guess you would say. Uh, hmm. How do I change the gut bacteria to promote better absorption? I uh, got you, cousin. Uh, Plants. You see as many plants as possible. The older you are, uh, the more you're either fasting or just adding more plants to that. You're changing your gut biome. There are 100 trillion bacteria in your gut. So it takes a while, especially the older you get. But, you know, the more you're adding the variety of flavors. And one of the reasons why um, we are slowing down in terms of, you know, it becomes harder to lose weight. It becomes harder to change your gut bacteria is because we're eating the same thing over and over again. <laughs> you think about it. It's once again, it's same four animals, cow, pig, um, chicken, and maybe like a buffalo or ostrich or something weird that you pick up somewhere. Um, outside of that, you just got fish. So if your your body, like I said, it's 22,000 edible plants. Our bodies are designed to search. That's to go get more. So the more plants that you're adding into your body, the more uh, diverse your gut bacteria is, the healthier it is for you. It actually makes it easier to slim down. Um, did a video on that. Please check that out on the gut biome and gut bacteria. Uh, Eddie Armstrong, watermelon. What, man, that's in my refrigerator, come on now. <laughs> watermelon is that beast. They call it the natural Viagra for a reason. Um, yeah. Uh, I. Uh, <laughs> I did a, I, for me personally, I would sit there and drink my black seed oil, make sure I got my maca powder, make sure I got my African fly, and definitely with the watermelon for breakfast or whatever I'm going to do because it helps out a lot. Uh, uh, how to know your testosterone level? Hey guys, um, I'm going to make sure that we get that into this uh, into this thread right here. Um, 
and make sure that we come back with that information so that you can get to it. I'm sorry I don't, didn't have it ready <laughs> for this particular one, but we'll make sure we have all of that for you. Uh, how about plant-based protein powders? Um, the issue, once again, is just, uh, go ahead and taste it. Does it taste like it's sweet? Then it's, no. Nah. <laughs> nah. If you're turning something into a powder, you're taking all the water out of it, then, you know, if it's a, a regular plant, make sure you check out the ingredients. There we go. Make sure you check out the ingredients. That makes a big difference. Uh, how to stay harder and longer in bed. Uh, easy answer, take African fly. <laughs> uh, but, you know, the other things you have to do with that um, does include, um, like I said, just, just taking care of your body. Um, you know, we are not at our healthiest, so some of our standards are low. We're like, oh, yeah, I lasted for four, 15 minutes in bed. It's like, yeah, but if, you have, if you're at a 800, 900 uh, testosterone level, then pff, you can last a lot longer. So uh, the healthier you are, the longer you'll, you'll last. Uh, black seed oil and, yeah, that was black seed oil uh, that I take. Also, I was finding out about maca powders, uh, different powders. So I'll make sure to, uh, you know, I'm actually going to be doing a video about what I eat, what I consume during the day. Uh, because <laughs> that was the next question. James, uh, mm, I lose weight when I quit meat. Yeah, yeah, that does make a difference. What do, I, what do you eat in a day to stay, stay big? Um, it's just, just my body. <laughs> um, it, it doesn't, me changing from eating, uh, eating meat and eating less meat and things like that, it's, I've, I've always been a big dude. Um, that, that just happens. Uh, I have to do a lot. <laughs> A lot of work to drop uh, to drop weight. Uh, let me see. Let me make sure I get all the questions in there. Uh, huh? Yeah, yeah. Black seed oil. It is good. Uh, there are different brands. I'll make sure when I do the video, I'll show you the brand that I use. Uh, I went from one brand that was like, "Ooh, it's potent." The other brands, like, "Yeah." Eh. Uh, do you recommend ginger for daily intake? Yep, got my ginger right over there. Actually, every morning. Uh, I'm chopping up some ginger and some lemon, put it into a tea. Uh, Want to help that digestion. So ginger is great for digestion, uh, which of course is important because if you have food stuck in your body, especially as you get older, your digestive system slows down. You want to get ginger into your system. Uh, leave the rice alone. Yeah. Well, it depends. It depends on what you're trying to do. So uh, once again, uh, rice has a lot of carbs in it, especially the white rice. Uh, and you know, if you're trying to drop weight, um, uh, having rice constantly is not a great thing. Um, uh, you know, you'll see, you know, people often talk about, uh, folks over in China who, you know, they would eat rice constantly, but they're talking about a different type of rice. The rice wasn't designed to just feed us. <laughs> Their rice was coming out of the ground and, you know, just natural. So, uh, I mean, that was back in the day. I'm not sure what they're doing in over there now. Uh, but yeah, you want to be careful with rice if you're trying to lose weight. Uh, ah, Eddie Armstrong. Good question. How come one minute I can be in the mood, the next I can't get it back up later on that day? Uh, we spoke a little bit about that earlier. When it comes to testosterone, uh, as you go through the day, your testosterone is just naturally going to dip about 20%, and that's a that's a significant uh, decrease. So you want to be uh, careful about what you do. Uh, so, you know, early in the day, you may be ready to rock and roll. And later on, it's like, well, your testosterone went down. If you had some sugar, that's taking it down further. If you've had alcohol, if you're eating meat, all those things take it down. And I know a lot of times when I talk, it seems like this is difficult. It's like, why I got to change so much? It's because we're living in an unnatural environment. Uh, we're not supposed to have processed meats at all. Uh, you know, people often talk about, well, our ancestors ate meat and, you know, we should be able to eat meat. And it's like, nah, they didn't. You know, the, what happened, check out Game Changers on Netflix. They talk about this. But what happened was back in the day, they were looking at, you know, uh, uh, excavating uh, places. And it was like, oh, this, we found bones, human bones, human remains. If you find human remains and they eat meat the way that we do, you will have to find a huge pit of chicken bones and cow bones and ribs and all types of stuff. And you never hear about that. You hear about human bones and nothing else. Uh, whenever they talk about it, well, they had the spears and stuff. No, those are tools. They were tools for digging, for cutting down fruit, for things like that. Uh, it is. It makes way more sense 
to just go out and get <laughs> the food that's right there on the plant, not moving, than to run and chase an animal, use up a lot of energy to kill it, field dress it, drag it back home, skin it, build up the fire, and then you have to eat it right then and there because you know you can't like store the 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 meat because not only do you have other creatures coming around trying to get it also, uh, but you know you're going to spoil it. You're going to get sick later on. So, uh huh. Let me see. Let me see. What time of day to take beet beetroot? Um, it's up to you. Uh, uh, if you're trying to do intermittent fasting, you know, first thing in the morning, then you want to wait later because that would definitely break your, your fast. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, any time of the day is, you know, and, and here's the thing to, um, keep in mind. Once again, we're in an unnatural situation. So, uh, when people are like, what time of the day should you eat this or drink this? Think about it. Our ancestors had no clue, no gym, <laughs> no calories, no, no carb cutting, none of this stuff. They didn't have any of this information and we're healthier and you know I've, I've talked to my uncles and they were like you know back in the day when they were growing up you go to the beach there were no fat people or, or it's just rare now it's like well if there's no fat people at the beach it's because they don't want to go to the beach <laughs> it has nothing to do with the health level so our health has been going in a downward direction uh, i want to make sure i get to this jay the god um 18 and have erection and premature ejaculation problems as long with performance anxiety. What should I do? Uh, please check out the video that I have uh, done on premature ejaculation. Um, and, you know, it's a couple of things with premature ejaculation. One, you're just telling the girl, like, hey, hey, you turned me, so, turned me on so much that I, I just couldn't control, control myself. Uh, and as you get older, uh, you will learn how to control it. That's that's a common problem for for guys as they're starting along their uh, sexual health journey, uh, and it can lead to performance anxiety. So don't stress it, bro. It's going to be all right. <laughs> it's going to be all right. Uh, there are some things that you can do um, in terms of you know if you're having erections. It sounds sort of counterintuitive uh, with this, but you know you want to actually have more foreplay. Uh, it, it may be a problem until you learn a little bit more control, but what you're actually doing is building up your testosterone so you actually have more stamina and you can last longer. So, uh, and, you know, and also take a break, take a break. All, all that information and more is in that other video. So please check out that. Uh, James asks, what if you get, you can get an erection, but it's not a strong erection. That sounds like on the sexual performance scale. Uh, that scale of one to 10, 10 being everything great, one being not so great, sounds like you're at a five. <laughs> so there's, uh, you have to do things to increase your testosterone. Uh, and we talk here, we, uh, we have the ESEIS system, that's uh, E-S-E-I-S, that covers the, the five things that you need. We're talking about uh, what you eat, energy, uh, S is sleep, the other E is for uh, exercise, I, intermittent fasting, and S is your soul getting rid of stress dealing with dealing with life so um yeah you have to pay attention i mean check out the other videos um to get to the point where you're increasing your erection strength that is the issue you have we do have a lot of uh articles on africanfly.com uh check out the the blog and you'll get that information mm-hmm Ah, Brandon, good, great question. Uh, I know organic is best, but what if you can't get seeded watermelon and, and all they have is a seedless? I understand your pain, my brother. The watermelon I have in the refrigerator is seedless only because that's, I can't, you know, get to it. I need to find, uh, and here's the thing, here's the thing. When I say the world is not set up for our success, that includes the watermelons. Like they took they bred the seeds out of the watermelons for two different reasons. One, because people would eat this, you know, the seeds is a problem for some people. They don't like that many seeds. So they bred the seeds out of them. But also now that you don't have the seeds, you can't plant watermelons yourself. So uh, it's two issues with that. But in the meantime, uh, yeah, you can, you know, just go ahead and take the, the watermelon that's available for you. If you can find a seeded watermelon, that's even better. Go for it. Uh, James, do Kegels work? Um, I've heard that they work. I've tried it myself. I'm not a like huge 
fan of Kegels because it's like, you know, every time you go to the bathroom, you're doing a Kegel movement. So, you know, I think it's relying on one thing. That's sort of like saying, you know what, I'm going to get in shape by just doing curls with my right arm. Well, nah, <laughs> your right arm is going to be cock diesel. <laughs> Everybody going to look at you strange like, what are you doing with your right arm, man? <laughs> but outside of that, outside of that, um, you need to do more than just Kegels. Uh, if you feel that it's working for you, great. But uh, you need to do uh, check out some of the videos we have. So you have to do more of that. Uh, doesn't estrogen affect the testosterone more than supplements? Um, estrogen, a lot of people think that estrogen is the polar opposite of testosterone. It's like you have more estrogen, that means you have less testosterone. Uh, actually, men and women have both estrogen and testosterone. Uh, obviously, men have way more testosterone than estrogen. Um, and, you know, uh, uh, what you need to be a little bit more careful about is the, the cortisol in terms of stress levels. Stress levels will kill your testosterone. Um, and, and they also have an effect on women and their estrogen and their testosterone levels. Um, so yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you know, supplements do help, but once again, it's about what else are you doing with, with your life? So yeah, there you go. Uh, hey, thank you, Donald. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, bro. Does chili increase testosterone levels? Uh, you mean chili as in a bowl of chili? I'm not sure. I'm not exactly sure what you mean by that. Uh, chili peppers? <laughs> chili peppers? Uh, I would say yeah. Uh, chili as as a meal? Uh, I would say not really. That's not uh, something you need for your testosterone. Uh huh. Uh, mm hmm. Hey, Ra. Hey, I appreciate you, man. Good work. Good work. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. All right, Jay the God, how do you feel about L-arginine and citrulline along with products like horny goat weed? Do those work? Um, L-arginine and citrulline, uh, L-citrulline, uh, you can get L-citrulline from watermelon. <laughs> you can get L-arginine from, uh, uh, I forget what specific uh, uh, fruit you can get that from. But, you know, a lot of the things that we look for in supplements are actually in food. Uh, you know, some, some people run around taking vitamin C. Vitamin C is in plants. That's where vitamin C comes from. <laughs> That's the reason why, you know, people say, oh, we're going to leave the planet. If you saw, see any movies about someone leaving the planet, the first thing you have to do is go to the other planet and plant plants because you have to have that vitamin C. Vitamin C is in, only comes from plants. And that's the reason why people say, oh, I'm just going to be a, do a meat diet. And it's like, well, yeah, you're going to have scurvy. <laughs> you need that vitamin C. That's the reason why they took barrels of apples on ships. Uh, back in the day, so they, they had, you know, apples last for a longer period of time, and so therefore you have some plant that you can uh, that you can eat on the regular. Mm -hmm. uh, does fasting lower cortisol? Uh, yeah, fasting does. Well, cortisol is a is a tricky thing. So cortisol uh, will be activated with stress. So if you're seeing the fasting as stress stressful then yeah, you're going to increase your cortisol because you're telling your body like, hey, uh, I'm about to die. And you're, you're thinking that and your body's like, oh, okay, well, we're going to sh shut down stuff inside of your body, move more blood to your brain so you can think of how to get out of this situation causing stress to your body. So yeah, you don't want to do that. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, hey, Creole cousin, what are your thoughts about ACV? Unfortunately, I'm not sure what ACV is. Uh, if you can... Give me a little quick definition on that. That would be helpful. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll make sure I got some questions, all these questions. Hey, hey, I really do thank you guys for all these questions. We've been on here, on here for whew, an hour, 13 minutes. I love doing this. I love making sure you guys get the, the right information. Uh, we have a lot of bad information out there. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Is it healthy to eat McDonald's? Uh, once every six months, <laughs> my man, um, actually, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. And the reason why I say that is once again, you're a human, <laughs> you can, uh, eat just about anything and live. So I, I don't want people to, you know, I'm very cautious. You know, I, I've gone from 200 animals down to 10 a month. And I kept that 10 there just in case I'm getting into a situation where it's like, I'm at a place you know, with family, friends, whatever, and it's like, ah, I want to eat something. Uh, I mean, 
you know, and, and also it's a mindset. You know, it took me a while to like realize like even if I'm going over to my mother's to eat and I love my mother's food, it's like I can't eat certain things. It's just I've just reached that stage. And, you know, fortunately, she she understands and she appreciates that. But, you know, every six months, as long as you're doing the other things, you're eating healthy, uh, eating more plant based whenever. And I have to be careful whenever I say eating healthy, people think like, you know, protein bars or something like that. I just plants. <laughs> if you eat more plants, then, yeah, you give yourself that room. Uh, for your testosterone levels are, are up, all these other things are up, you eat that, eh, it's not going to have a bad effect on your body. It's preferable if you never need it, <laughs> but if not, don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yep, yep, yep. Uh, make sure I get all the questions in here. Hey, once again, guys, um, please make sure, if you have not, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell on uh, our channel here so to, you know, make sure to get all the information. Also, definitely go to AfricanFly.com uh, where you can get, uh, you can sign up for Fly Zones. You'll get even more information on there. It's uh, a wonderful thing. We like doing that. Uh, Brandon, what about Beyond Meats plant-based meat? I like it. <laughs> I like it. However, um, you have to remember, it's sort of like, you know, uh, switching from uh, cow's milk to plant-based milk, from cow's meat to plant-based cow's meat. <laughs> it's all we're doing is doing is reversing something we shouldn't be doing to begin with. We should have never been drinking milk. We should never been eating cows. So right now what we're doing is trying to take plants, turn them into that just so uh, it's, it's something that's comfortable for us. So for me personally, um, I, I, I enjoy Beyond Meat, but I do notice that it's, it does have an effect on me that's not as positive. Uh, and maybe it's just me. Um, I'm a little bit more sensitive because I pay a lot more attention to my body once I realize, you know, uh, I, I rarely get sick. I'm a person who rarely gets sick, and when I do feel sick, I'm 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 almost scared because I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> so uh, I pay attention. Uh, so the issue with Beyond Meat is that it has a lot of oil, a lot of oil. So if you're going to go in that direction, just be aware of that it's not perfect. It's better to eat the apple. <laughs> it's better to eat the the whole plant than to eat that. Now. You know, if every once in a while, like that McDonald's question, you feel like, okay, I want to be on beef burger, blah, blah, blah. You know, I, I did that for a good long while. Uh, I haven't had one in, haven't had one in a good long, long while because of those effects. But if you're in that transition phase, then yeah, go for it. Go for it. Um, how do you increase blood flow to all areas of your body? Run. Exercise. It's that, that simple. That simple. Uh, mm-hmm. Can you put the website, website, AfricanFly.com, uh, spelled correctly, not ebonically. <laughs> uh, blood flow, how to increase it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, that will do it. Just working out. That will increase your blood flow. Uh, hey, Brandon, thanks. I appreciate that. Uh, hey, James. Yeah, James got that. Yes, sir. Uh, pumpkin seeds, rich in L-arginine. Yes. Yes. There we go. All these different things that people are, you know, you go to the store and you're spending all these money at the GNC and stuff like that. It's in a plant. It's in a plant. Just look it up. <laughs> Whatever new thing they say that you need in your body, look it up. <laughs> More than likely you'll find a plant that has it in it. Um, all plants have all of the essential amino acids in them in some varying level. So there you go. Uh, all right. Da -da -da. Oh, man. I miss you, bro. All right. Thanks for I want to I go ahead and, and, and we're going to close this down. I want to thank you all, first of all, for showing up, showing out, asking these questions every Thursday. We're going to be doing this. Um, make sure to pay attention to the, sh the videos we put out Thursday, 9. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we do Thursday night lives at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'll take in all your questions. Thank you so very much. Thanks, Rod. Thanks, Christopher. Thanks, James. Uh, Oh, apple cider vinegar. Yeah, yeah, apple cider vinegar is a great thing. Uh, uh, do, do you post information elsewhere like Twitter and IG? Not yet. We're going to go there, uh, but we got you. I got you. We're, gonna, we're trying to get this information out to as many people as possible. Thanks, Elliot. Thanks, Albert. Thanks, Brennan. Uh, I preach, appreciate all of you guys. Uh, thanks, Ed. Love you. So, as always, hey, I, I, I'm, I'm here for you. Please ask your questions. Uh, 
leave them here in this section. You know, we have the comic section. You can go to African Fly. You can e me, email me. Uh, I try to get to as many of them as possible uh, when I can. So, uh, hey, I appreciate all of you. This is Uncle B saying, get your game up. Peace out.